All right. Hello everyone. This is Connor with the uh, with a video on thin air fuel theory in preparation for ASEN 3111 exam two. Um, and that's all I got. Let's get into it. So thin air foil theory, like it says right here, is basically letting us assume that, um, well, at least we, be we begin this analysis by saying that this airfoil is thin enough that we can approximate it with just the camber line. All right, so I have another diagram down here, and we're going to be using the vortex sheet plus uniform flow. So vortex sheet plus uniform. This is our vortex sheet. This is our uniform flow. And with these two together, we can do some analysis. We can uh, ultimately estimate some lift and drag um, quantities for a uh, for a thin airfoil. All right. And when we have a problem set up like this, or when we we have a model set up like this, where we have multiple elementary flows. So vortex sheet is an elementary flow. Uniform flow is also elementary. We need to establish some boundary conditions, right? And I talked about this a little bit in our um, cut a condition video, but essentially I'll put them again here. There's a little more detail in that other video, but boundary conditions are no penetration. And for us, this is no penetration of the camber line or mean, mean camber line. I think I will be a little more specific. Mean camber line. And this is because we're approximating the entire airfoil by just its camber, its mean camber line, right? And then also, of course, we have the cutta condition, which I talked about in more detail in our cutta condition video. All right, so check that out if you're uh, looking for more information on the cutta condition. And we are actually, and actually, I'll say the cutta condition is one of those things that um, yeah, uh, our professor likes to, uh, or decided that the math for holding the cutta condition uh, for this problem is a little higher than what we need. So we'll be talking mostly about the no penetration boundary condition, and we'll just trust that the cutta condition is satisfied as well, right? So if essentially, uh, the no bound no penetration condition says that um, when we take both of our flows together. V infinity plus, and I'm gonna we're gonna use W prime of S. I'll explain these either. This is the normal. So essentially, what this is, this is the um, the normal velocity due to the uniform flow. And then again, this is normal to the camber line. And then we also have W prime, which is the same quantity, the normal velocity. So normal velocity, but due to vortex sheet. And again, this is uh, normal to camber line. So these two normal velocity components, essentially, if we have our if we have our camber line going right here, and we have, you know, some v infinity normal flow or normal velocity, and we have some vortex normal velocity, the issue these two should add up and cancel out so that we have no com no normal component, and we end up with a purely tangential component. Tangential only. All right, yeah, so this this boundary condition over here is pretty much the crux of this problem. Uh, we, we said the cutting condition is something that we're going to trust is satisfied um, via higher level math methods. And for us, we, we're paying attention mostly to this no penetration boundary condition, right? And the way we solve for this is we, we, we kind of have like a fixed feet free stream. Right? There's not a lot we can do about that, but we can define um, gamma as a function of s, um, which will give us, which will counteract v infinity s just perfectly. Right, So this is, this is the vortex strength along the sheet. We want that. Right? All right, And the way this works out is we end up with this integral where we have, excuse me, 
v infinity alpha minus dz dx is equal to 1 over 2 pi times the integral from 0 to c of gamma at xi um, dxi over x minus xi. All right, and xi is here the location of vortex, and x is like the uh, location we're concerned with to satisfy. So uh, the effect of all the vortices, right? All of them together have to satisfy no penetration at x, and this is kind of how we're going about this, right? So we should end up with some function of x that is resulting from the integral of, um, you know, xi, or gamma xi d xi over x minus uh, xi, right? And the only way we can do this is if we do a change of variables. And um, you'll probably, you've seen this probably plenty of times, but this is where um, it comes out, where we, we put this little guy in. All right, and when we do that, essentially what we're saying is we we end up with this um, uh, this dummy variable theta that kind of allows us to integrate and solve for this integral. And uh, I won't get too into the details about that, um, but this is kind of why you know the the reason we have this is is basically that we can't solve without it. All right, so if we keep going with this, we're going to end up with uh, you know we can go two different directions. This is kind of the way we took it in class. Uh, we can either solve for it, where we take dz dx equal, okay, please don't, dz dx equal to zero, right? And if we do that, we're basically saying this is a symmetric airfoil. dz dx is equal to zero. We're saying there is no slope to the camber, right? It's symmetric, whereas if dz dx is okay. dz dx is not zero. You know, we have some curve to our camber, right? And when we do that, when we say dz dx is equal to zero, we get these quantities. Um, these are kind of like the items of interest once we've solved out for our, um, you know, we get our uh, gamma of xi, and this gives us the vortex strength, and we put it together with our uniform flow and we we end up with all these um, all these airfoil properties essentially once we put them together to model our the flow over our thin airfoil um so this is what happened when we took dz dx uh to be zero now when we take dz dx to be um small and actually i should preface by saying this this dz dx here is assumed This is assumed small before we actually even get here, right? So we leave it small, um, is, is what I'm saying. And I should have said that earlier, but uh, this is assumed small in our derivation. And I'll recap with our, our assumptions at the end. But when we do that, we end up with these equations, right? So what, what I want to point out is that in order to do this, we had to approximate our uh, function with a Fourier expansion of the... Um, well, we, we, I, I, we've skipped a lot of steps, but there was a Fourier uh, expansion needed in there. And essentially what this gives us is just an infinite sum of um, cosines and sines, all right? And together, um, so we have, or sorry, just sines. And um, we have these coefficients a naught and then a n greater than or equal to one, right? We have these two equations for these here. And these, once we've solved all this out, this is our... Um, our vortex sheet strength, and this is this is after we've put in our w variable, so it's all in terms of theta. Uh, and after we've done this substitution, we end up every, with everything in terms of theta. We have our a n, a naught, and these just all feed in, you know, down here, 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 here. These guys are actual integrals you have to evaluate yourself. And we have a, we have a video going over these and an example of using uh, thin airfoil theory on cambered wings and uh, using these Fourier coefficients. Um, with that, I also want to point out that a few things change. Um, so firstly, uh, we have this, this CL, right? 
Earlier, we had Cl equal to 2 pi alpha, so Cl over alpha equals 2 pi, so Cl equals 2 pi alpha. Now we have Cl equals 2 pi alpha plus this big quantity. And if you pay attention, you can see that this, is, this big quantity is actually just the negative of alpha L equals 0. So if we bring this all down here, we have um, Cl is equal to 2 pi alpha minus 0 lift angle of attack which makes sense. We knew this was something that some airfoils had, right? Sometimes they don't have uh, zero lift at zero angle of attack. In fact, we know that's the case when we put a camber on a wing, we know that we don't have to have an angle of attack to generate lift. All right, with a symmetric airfoil, we do. Otherwise, we don't. However, this quantity stays the same. We keep our lift slope. Thin airfoil, th thin airfoil theory keeps a two pi lift slope no matter what, camber or no camber. The only thing that changes is the zero lift angle of attack. We have some other things that change. Um, well, okay, that's the only thing that changes for lift coefficient. We have some other things that change for the um, uh, leading edge moment coefficient, quarter cord moment coefficient, and the center of pressure coefficient. These are all just kind of shifted around uh, based on the geometry of the wing, which comes out of A1 and A2, um, which A1 and A2 come from the vortex sheet string, which is derived from... Um, you know, these are all a function of DZDX, right? Which, is, which tells us the shape of our of our camber, right? This is the slope um, of our camber, all right? So, quick recap. So thin airfoils, we approximate the camber line. Um, and then we say camber slope is small, right? So these are kind of our, this is a little awkward that I've drawn it like this. These are of equal importance. So these are our two assumptions, right? So we can, uh, we can assume it's thin, right? And we call it thin air fuel theory. So that sounds appropriate. And then the secondary thing is that we assume the camber slope is small. And there's a few other places where camber slope is small plays in. Um, you know, uh, there's you know there's a few there's a few other spots with that, and if you if you're really interested in that, uh, like I said, lecture ten of Professor Evans' notes uh, goes into great detail about all of this. Um, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please come by our office hours. Uh, we have them all up in our calendar. Um, but I think for the rest of the semester, this is fall 2019. Uh, they'll be in. Uh, the George Bourne room from 5 to 6 on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, and with that, I'm signing off. Uh, good luck on your exam.